What's going on everybody? It's your boy, the Puerto Rican conservative. And today we're gonna to be talking about Marxist Leninism and how through ideological subversion, Americans have been psychologically reprogrammed to abandon both their morality and their beliefs in the nuclear family. I'm also gonna go into a little detail about how ideological subversion was effectively applied on Puerto Rico by mainland US Democrats and how it led to the present failed economic status of Puerto Rico. This and many more interesting talking points today on Tracing the Facts. Hey yo, I love when cats think they're bigger than a sumo. That's when I hit them with a little Puerto Rican judo. Oh, you don't know what that is. That's when I say, you don't know who got you. I know the first question many of you probably have is, what the hell is Marxist Leninism? Well, to give you a brief introduction to it and its intended effect, first understand that Marxism is more of a political method established in the early 19th century by a man known as Karl Marx and another named Frederick Engel. Marxism can be said to be somewhat of a pseudo-military extension of communism focused exclusively on psychological warfare. It is based on psyche manipulative dogma that encourages practices they believe can break society's natural ideological and moral alignments and through it, transmutate traditionally capitalist states into socialist ones. Now, even though I know this all sounds like something straight out of a sci-fi novel, it's not. Moles, misidentified in the US as social engineers, have figured out a way to reframe our ideas of right and wrong by first occupying key positions in America's academia, the mainstream news media, and cinema and then weaponizing these information platforms against us, they then mainstream and normalize information conceptually designed to reframe our perspectives and gradually dictate for us which ideas and concepts we will or won't be condescending towards. Now, I know it all might still sound impossible to believe because many of us like to believe that we're all individuals with individual thoughts because only ants think as a collective. But in 1985, a former KGB agent known as Yuri Alexandrovich Bezmeno abandoned the Soviet and migrated to America to share with us that Russia's agencies had redirected funds from information warfare into advanced idiocultural war. In short, Russia was now spending less than 15% of time, money, and manpower on espionage and 85% on slow process projects known as active measure, or most specifically speaking, ideological subversion. A branch of psychological warfare created to restructure a society's ideological alignments by introducing clandestinely anti-self-interest concepts in stages every 15 or 20 years, or the time it might take for most of us to finish school and through it, successfully, psychologically condition a whole generation. Now, the threat doesn't end there. Most people are fully unaware that America's university and college professors are actually foreigners and that one out of every three of the top professors in America's universities and colleges were educated overseas. Now, understanding this, we can then logically conclude that foreign ideas do have the ability to counter Americanism or concepts that encourage love of America through the academia and revisionism simply by engineering terms that demoralize traditional ideas associated with patriotism and demonizing those that champion for them. Remember Berkeley? Also note that 12 of the top media companies in America are also foreign owned, predominantly by China. And Hollywood itself is slowly losing its monopoly on cinema, which is being bought out by foreign companies in bits and pieces at a pace faster than most people can track. Many of you might still be wondering, how does Marxism, how is Marxism implemented on us? And how has it affected us? Well, as stated before, it takes 20 years to change a generation and 40 years to make sure it goes on an irreversible path towards self-destruction according to the KGB agent, Bohemian. In 1947, ideological subversion was implemented on Puerto Rico's residents with the help of Puerto Rico's first governor, Democrat Luis Munoz Marin. The goal, to transform a pro-independent Puerto Rico into a fully dependent and US-reliant region 
sustained exclusively by the presence of U.S. companies in Puerto Rico and warfareism. Operation Bootstrap was launched, which encouraged U.S. companies and corporations to migrate to Puerto Rico with the promise of tax exemptions. Uh, though industrialization grew, agricultural negligence spread, and from the 1950s to the 1990s, Puerto Rico went from producing 90% of the products that it consumed to less than 10% and importing more than 69% from the U.S. and the rest from other Caribbean countries. By 1991, Bill Clinton also replaced a vital tax code, 936 with tax code 830, which led to more than 500,000 jobs being lost in less than a year, which accounts for one-sixth of the entire Puerto Rican population. Today, less than 20 years later, Puerto Rico is in a $73 billion debt and unable to ever gain independence because of their non-existent agricultural programs. And it wasn't just in Puerto Rico that ideological subversion was implemented. It was implemented in the 1960s by the CIA against black power movements such as the Black Panther parties to corrupt their organization and demoralize their cause as well as destroy the black community and convert them from politicians to drug addicts by the 80s. The operation is known as COINTELPRO. And if you think it's only affecting minorities, it's not. We would just practice. Ask yourself this, how do you think America went from a unified America after 9-11 and the Twin Towers to almost 20 years later, the word patriotism being correlated with hate, the word nationalism being uh, correlated with racism, the word conservatism as prejudice and republicanism as fascism. It's because ideological subversion has never stopped and it won't until America ideologically implodes in on itself.